Um, well, let's say that we're delivering a current of 4 amps. How can we interpret that? Well, it turns out that an amp is a ratio unit because an amp is coulombs per second. Remember that coulombs are a measure of charge. Coulombs measure charge. Well, with that information now, you should be able to pause the video and articulate what does it mean if you're delivering a current of 4 amps. Well, we can combine these into a single ratio, put a 1 on the bottom. If the current is 4 amps, that means that in one second, 4 coulombs of charge are being delivered. In one second, 4 coulombs of charge are being delivered or transferred or passing by this point. Um, so you can clearly see this tells us how quickly the current of charge is passing. It tells us how many coulombs per second are moving past. In one second, four coulombs per charge, uh, four coulombs of charge are passing. Again, this is hypothetical. It doesn't mean that we're actually running the experiment for only one second. Uh, it just tells us how much charge we would get if we did run it for one second. You probably already know that the atomic weight of carbon is 12 grams per mole. You can look that up in your periodic table. The atomic weight of carbon is 12 grams per mole. Um, most of you have probably encountered the concept of a mole, but just in case you haven't, a mole just is uh, an amount. A mole is a way of measuring an amount of carbon or of some substance. So let's interpret what does this tell us? What does the atomic weight tell us about the carbon? It tells us that if we have one mole of carbon, that would have a mass of 12 grams. If we had a mole of carbon, that would have a mass of 12 grams. That's just hypothetical. Um, actually, I don't have any carbon in my hands right now. But if I did, if I had one mole, that would have a mass of 12 grams. Well, of course, it should be easy then to see um, if I had three moles, what the mass of that would be. So atomic weight is measured in a ratio unit. Uh, let's talk about a concept from chemistry. Let's say that you have a solution that's 0.01 molar hydrochloric acid. A solution of 0.01 molar hydrochloric acid. Uh, what does that mean? Well, molarity is actually a ratio unit. Molarity of hydrochloric acid really means moles of hydrochloric acid over liters of solution. Molarity actually means moles per liter of solution. So now we should be able to interpret what does it mean if I tell you that you, uh, we have a 0.01 molar hydrochloric solution. It means that if I measured out one liter of the solution, it would contain 0.01 moles of hydrochloric acid. If I measured out one liter of the solution, it would contain 0.01 moles of hydrochloric. Remember, in case you haven't encountered the concept of moles before, moles is just a measure of an amount. So if we had one liter of solution, the amount of hydrochloric we would have in that one liter is 0.01 moles. This is just hypothetical. It doesn't mean we've actually measured out one liter. Uh, we might not even have one liter. Um, but if we did have one liter of the solution, it would have an amount of hydrochloric of 0.01 moles.
The heat of vaporization of water is approximately 2300 kilojoules per kilogram. The heat of vaporization of water is approximately 2300 kilojoules per kilogram. Let me remind you again that joules and kilojoules are measures of energy. And I hope you know that grams and kilograms are a measure of mass. Let's try to interpret what this means. Give that a shot. Try to interpret what this 2300 number tells us. I hope you gave that a shot. What it tells us is that if we had one kilogram of water, it would take 2300 kilojoules of energy to vaporize it. This number tells us that if we had one kilogram of water, it would take 2,300 kilojoules of energy to vaporize it. Vaporizing something basically means making it evaporate or boiling it, uh, pretty much. Um, well, obviously, um, you already know that it takes energy to vaporize something. Um, for example, uh, if you want to boil um, a pot of water, you have to put it on the stove and add energy to it by turning on the heat on the stove. And obviously, the more water you want to boil, if you actually wanted to actually vaporize all the water, the more water you want to vaporize, uh, the more heat energy it's going to take. Well, if you want to vaporize one kilogram of water, that will require 2,300 kilojoules of energy. Again, this is just hypothetical. Um, it might be that you're actually not going to vaporize any water at all. Or maybe you're actually going to vaporize two kilograms. But I hope you can see that um, knowing how much heat it takes to vaporize one kilogram, it wouldn't be too hard to see how much heat it's going to take to vaporize two kilograms. So as usual, even though a ratio unit only gives us hypothetical information, that's very useful, hypothetical information. Incidentally, this concept of heat of vaporization is a concept that you might encounter in both physics and chemistry. Faraday's constant is 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. This is the first thing we've talked about, um, well, that's a kind of a universal constant uh, in a sense. Uh, well, I guess maybe we've talked about something other than their kind of constants, like the density of water. Uh, but in any case, uh, this is a constant. Uh, 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. Anytime someone talks about Faraday's constant, it's always this number. Now remember that coulombs is a measure of charge. And moles is a measure of amount. So what does it tell us about the universe if Faraday tells us that Faraday's constant is 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons? Stop and think about that for a second. Let's make this into a combined ratio. What Faraday's constant tells us is that one mole of electrons has a total charge of 96,485 coulombs. If you had an amount of electrons that was one mole, if you have one mole of electrons, the total charge on all of those electrons is 96,485 coulombs. You can see why this is a constant, uh, because the charge on an electron is a constant amount. So anytime you have one mole of electrons, it's always going to give you the same total charge, 96,485 coulombs. Uh, by the way, again, this is a concept that could appear in either physics or chemistry. Uh, for example, this could uh, certainly appear in chemistry when you're covering electrochemistry in the second semester.